Hi, Year 5. It's Mrs Gibbons. Hope you're well. Uh, this is session two of our reading this week, and we are learning to develop our vocabulary. So I'm going to read the text to you again uh, that we looked at yesterday, and I've chosen some vocabulary from the text that we're going to look at in a little bit more detail. But it's obviously useful to see it in context. So as I read through, obviously I've highlighted the words we're going to be looking at. So obviously pay special attention to them. Okay, so the text is called Our Mountain. For British climbers of the 1920s and 1930s, Everest was, quite simply, our mountain. It didn't matter that it was over 4,500 miles away on the border of two of the most remote countries in the world, countries that weren't even part of the British Empire. To paraphrase the poet Rupert Brooke, it was a foreign field that would be forever England. The British had measured it, named it, photographed it, flown over it and died on it. And so they assume that one day a British mountaineer will be the first to its summit. Everest was measured in the mid-19th century. It stands in the middle of the Himalayas on the border of Nepal and Tibet, and like many mountains, marks both a physical and political boundary. Even though none of the surveyors ever set foot on its slopes, the great trigonometric survey of British India was able to measure its height with astonishing accuracy from observation points over 100 miles away. They estimated it to be 29,002 feet, 27 feet shorter than the current official height. Breaking with convention, instead of retaining its local name, Chomolungma, they christened it Mount Everest in honor of George Everest, a former chief surveyor. At about the same time, the sport of mountaineering was growing in the European Alps. British climbers were very competitive making first ascents of many peaks in Switzerland and France and, in 1857, establishing the world's first mountaineering society, the Alpine Club. Within a few years, most of the high mountains of the Alps had been climbed and the more enthusiastic mountaineers had begun to look further afield for new challenges. Okay, so the first word we're going to look at is remote. So if we look at it in context, it says it didn't matter that it was over 4,500 miles away on the border of two of the most remote countries in the world. So that gives us a clue as to what remote might mean. So in a second, I'm going to ask you to pause the video. I'd like to go away and write in your science books your definition of what remote means. We're talking about location, where something is. If it is in a remote place, what would remote mean? So obviously, if you already know that, that's great. Or you can use an online dictionary to help you. OK, uh, so you can go and do that. And when you are ready to carry on, you can unpause this video. OK, the next step for this word remote is to come up with some synonyms. So words that mean the same. So I've given you a couple of options to get started. If something is remote, it's very secluded. It's very distant. It's sort of on its own, away from lots of other things. So secluded and distant are two examples. Uh, and we need to come up with some antonyms as well. So the opposite of remote would be nearby or local. They're two to get you started. So obviously you need to come and add some more to this list now. It's up to you how you lay it out. You might want to lay it out in this cross formation or you might just want to write a list. That's absolutely fine. So uh, just in case you need any extra support with that, on the next slide, here are some um, synonyms and antonyms to get you started. So you can add to the list. So you can pause the video when you are ready. Uh, unpause when you're ready to move on to the next word. So I'll leave it on that for you for now and unpausing ready to go on to the next word. Okay, the next word we're going to look at is astonishing. So let's look at that in the context. So it says the survey, the trigonometric survey of British India was able to measure its height with astonishing accuracy. So if the accuracy was astonishing, what does that mean if something is astonishing? So you need to write a definition for that and also come up with some more synonyms, words that mean the same. So I've given you astounding and amazing. Can you add to that list? And we need some more antonyms. So the opposite of astonishing, if something is unremarkable, that is not astonishing, it's the opposite. So again, as usual, um, if you've got some you can already think of, that's brilliant. If you're struggling a bit, then here's some more to help you. 
In case you can pause the video and when you're ready to move on to the next word, then unpause. Okay, and the final word for today is enthusiastic. So let's just look at that in the text. So it says, within a few years, most of the high mountains of the Alps have been climbed and the more enthusiastic mountaineers had begun to look further afield for new challenges. So again, can you write a definition of what enthusiastic means? I've given you one synonym this time, so I've given you excited. Can you think of some more synonyms? And then again, I've given you one antonym. I've given you indifferent. If you're indifferent about something, you're not really that bothered. So it's like the opposite of being enthusiastic. So again, can you have some more antonyms to that list? And then for this word, we'd like you to draw it as well. So could you do a drawing that would depict somebody that is enthusiastic? And as usual, if you've got words already that you know, that's perfect. Uh, but if you need a bit of help, there's some words there to help you out. Okay, fabulous. Well done. And I will see you soon for session three. Take care. Bye.